Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Tebow. It's hard to believe, but we are once again on the stretch run to completing another academic year here at Bristol Community College. Despite many challenges, it's been another successful experience for students and faculty alike. First up this month, the South Coast area houses many people who, for one reason or another, never attended college or, for that matter, never attained their high school diploma. The college's adult basic education program spends a good portion of its efforts to promote getting educated at any age. And they held an event recently to introduce these potential students for what it's like to attend college for a day. For those who have not taken classes for some time, the most difficult step is making the decision to come back. The BCC Adult Basic Education Program held a College for a Day seminar to introduce these non-traditional students to life in college. Students had the opportunity to participate in a classroom setting to see if attaining their GED and or attending college is of interest to them. Acting Dean Bernadette Driscoll says BCC offers a welcoming and affordable GED experience. We serve as students from 60, 16 to 60. Um, and the nice thing about that in our program is we do have very small classes. They range from like 11 to 13. So often you have the older students mentoring the younger students to help them along or vice versa. So it's never too late. I mean, it's just, um, these are all free classes and all of these programs, they're free. So um, it's just a matter of making that phone call and taking that placement test and also being persistent. You may end up being on a wait list and it might take you a period of time to get in the program. But if you persist, you will get in and we will provide the services that you're gonna need to be successful. Driscoll goes on to say that although attaining a GED is a great accomplishment, furthering one's education may be in order. We understand more so than ever that a GED is just not enough. So we need to um, have our students explore next steps. Next steps can be um, certificate programs, they can be college programs, there's various um, different directions that our students are going to take, but we need for them to explore and see what's out there, not after they get their GED, but while they're getting their GED. Uh, one of the things that we started this year in all the different programs was um, College Success Seminar. So the students are dual enrolled. They're in their GED classes, but at the same time, they're taking a one credit College Success Seminar class. So we're starting, we're also providing AccuPlacer at the GED programs. Uh, Christine Resendez has worked with us to set that up. So they're really thinking uh, right from the beginning when they enter our program as to, okay, this is just a stepping stone. I'm going to be getting my GED, but what do I hope to do after that? And we can put things in place to make that transition easier. Part of the student's day was to hear from former GED students who have gone through the program and are currently enrolled at BCC. Maria Bartholomew is one of those student ambassadors. She came to America from Portugal 21 years ago and received her GED from the Taunton Center. I wasn't thinking about coming to college. Being bilingual, I thought that was hard. And I changed my mind when actually I was in BCC. Uh, I was in a GED course and the teachers start talking to us about college and actually when I graduated from uh, GED I received a letter from BCC at home and was that letter to change my mind. I came here and I enrolled in BCC I, and it was the best thing I, I did. Yeah, I'm very happy I, I did that, I took that route. Driscoll says hearing how other students have succeeded in returning to school often makes the journey for new students easier. These students sometimes lack the confidence. That's the biggest thing. So if they hear a student that has gone through a GED program and has been successful entering college and they, know, they can give them an idea as to what to expect, um, I think that's key because we can tell them about how we've been through and what we've experienced. But if they know a former classmate is going through it and has been successful, that really weighs a lot more. Tom McDonough is another student ambassador who immigrated from Ireland and returned to earn his GED after suffering a work-related injury. He feels he needs to share his experience to get others to see the benefits of returning to school. Well, if I could inspire one, that the way I've been inspired by other students here, like, you know, if I could just get one 
and make them feel the same way people made me feel here, I, I would feel that I'd have accomplished something. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like I said, like, you know, with, I'm not like, you know, an A student, but I'm A student. You know what I mean? That kind of way. Like, you know, I got a lot of help through the task, tutoring, peer tutoring and all this. And I'm a tutor myself. So every time like, you know, you, you, somebody reaches out a hand to help you, like, you know, if you can do the same for somebody else and pull them up as well when you, you know what I mean? That is my ambition. Student Ambassador Mariano Gome says it's never too late to return to school. The sun is big enough for everyone. And this is their time. This is their moment. They should ne never hide behind the story. They should come in front to, to the front page and make their story as many others did before them. I want to tell them that if they work really hard, they can get to whatever they want as their goal. Uh, they can dream big if they want, but it's a question of putting themselves into it. I want to tell them that I'm here today because I kept telling myself that I can do it and I will do it. And if they tell themselves that they can do it and they will do it, then they will do it. The college's Office of Adult Basic Education and Workforce Literacy offers programs throughout the year. You can find out more by calling 508-678-2811, extension 2274. By the way, this year's GED class will graduate at the Fall River campus on June 8th. We'll have more of Around BCC right after this. Welcome back. Many colleges and universities have long had its own broadcasting arm through a student-run radio station. BCC has recently joined that fraternity, albeit not in the traditional sense. Last fall, a group of interested students came together to petition that Bristol Community College establish its own student-run radio station. Although there are no radio frequencies available for use by the college, Technology has made it easy for these students to get on the air. 
BCC Radio Live launched in February by broadcasting exclusively online. The project was spearheaded by BCC student Kate Melody, who says she's always had the radio bug. Ever since I was younger, I've always listened to the radio. I absolutely love music. You know, music's always there when you need it. When I was younger, I used to listen to the station Fun 107 a lot, and they knew me on a first name basis. I'd win so many times a week to the point where they just got over it and they're like, you know what, we're going to have you come in. And they put me on for about an hour and a half with one of their DJs whose name was Katie at the time. And ever since then, it that's been what I've wanted to do. I love people. I love music. And it's just all come together. Melody says the impact of the radio station provides the college community with unlimited potential. It's unbelievable. It gives the college that much more where you don't have to be here to know what's going on. You can log on right into your computer. You can be home in your pajamas if you wanted to. In your own natural environment, you can be as comfortable as you want to and you're not forced to listen to it. It's something that's easy going that everybody loves to do. Everybody's involved and it's just a lot of fun all around. Vice President of Academic Affairs Michael Vieira says the creation of BCC Radio Live fits well into the college's mission of creating a well-rounded student. The more that we can make connections between what happens in the classroom, the communications program, for example, and what happens um, across campus, then the more the students benefit. I think if you look at any of the research, the students who succeed in any field are students who communicate well, students who can speak well, who can write well. And that's exactly what the radio station will do for these students. It'll give them an opportunity to, to get their thoughts together, to be able to communicate, to, be, uh, to articulate, enunciate, all of those things that, that really are important as they leave here. Um, I think it's also a great opportunity for leadership development and the fact that a lot of these students really took the initiative to, to push the idea of the club, um, both to you and, and, and to us, you know, both in student engagement and in academics is really a, a sign that we've got a, a great student population, which we already know, who are really committed to um, not just their education, but, but enriching the college community and the community at large. The content for the radio station is still taking shape, but Melody contends that there will be a variety of programs to meet many listeners' needs. I've had a lot about liberal politics for the area and for the nation. Um, there's sports in the making for what's going to cover the college sports and also possibly like the NBA, NFL. And then, of course, you're going to have the music, which is the big thing that everybody wants, but we got to integrate what the college wants, seeing this is a station for the college. So it's all in the works. Although there's a limited broadcast schedule, you can tune in to BCC Radio Live and find out more information on getting involved in the student radio station by going to the station's website, bccradiolive.com. Com. In other student communications news, the BCC student-run newspaper has recently gone through a metamorphosis, one which will help ensure its existence for years to come. The Observer, the student-run newspaper at Bristol Community College, had run into some tough times through a period of disorganization and lack of student interest. This semester, the paper fell under the auspices of the college's writing center, where better supervision and collaboration among students could take place. The result was a relaunch of The Observer in March. Faculty advisor Jack Conway says it was time the paper refocused its vision to meeting the needs of all students. The hope was uh, that we could produce a newspaper that students on the BCC campuses, uh, Attleboro, New Bedford, uh, would feel uh, proud of. Um, and that would require us to not only write stories, but to run the gamut of photography, uh, design, art, and also to make sure that we were inclusive of the New Bedford campus and the Attleboro campus. Uh, a newspaper, a campus newspaper, provides uh, BCC or any uh, college with fundamentally a, a, a great learning tool it gives students a chance to actually see their work in print, uh, they, to see their photography uh, in places that otherwise uh, they wouldn't appear. The organizational structure of the paper will be flexible, with a revolving set of editors for each edition. 
Chris Wilbur of New Bedford is one of those editors. He sees including news from the New Bedford campus as part of the paper's inclusiveness. I'd like to see our satellite be more combined and connected to the Fall River campus and with Fall River students. Um, and we have a lot to represent and we have a lot of students which, which don't get to participate in Fall River events as much as uh, we would like. So the New Bedford Campus Observer will be one of those, those connective pieces um, that will bring us all together. And I hope, I hope to, to grow that and I hope we can get a lot of students involved and interested in the Observer and, and in BCC as a whole. Wilbur says there's potential for the Observer to involve more students in disseminating information about the college. The student newspaper is fantastic for, for students because it's students to students and uh, students are producing the paper and we have the same concerns and questions as students who are reading the paper so we kind of were right inside the, the minds of our readers um, and we're really happy to connect with each other and produce something to use our contacts and abilities to get information as uh, newspaper reporters and to, to bring that information at large to the student population. So I think it's a, it's a really good inside the loop to each other to um, connect all the students on campus. Conway feels participation at the paper will prove to be an attraction for students within the college's communications program. He also believes it to be another vehicle to spread the brand that is Bristol Community College. Uh, we also uh, took a hard look at uh, previous issues and felt as though we should expand our horizons in terms of the campus. So what we did was we sat down and divided up the campus into what would normally be uh, newspaper beats. And we figured out initially that we had basically six divisions to cover plus Attleboro and New Bedford. And what we tried to do, as any newspaper would do, is to assign a writer to each of those beats. Uh, we didn't reach all of them. Uh, we hope to reach all of them soon enough. And um, the students have been wonderful uh, about covering stories that they felt were necessary to cover and also covering stories that uh, uh, they might not have known of and we had to advise them of. Plans are in the works at The Observer to keep the paper a monthly publication as well as adding a presence online. Time now for our Alumni in Your Community segment where today we profile a BCC alum who has made his way to the top of the healthcare industry ladder, serving as president of a Massachusetts hospital. Hi, my name is Richard Robert, Bristol Community Class of 1972. I grew up in New Bedford, graduated from uh, Holy Family High School. I uh, had a great experience growing up in New Bedford. It was a great city to grow up in. I grew up in the South End. Always got a chance to go to the beaches. It was a nice place to live, you know, so it was a very good experience. As a young person, I was very interested in music. I did a lot of music when I was a young person. Um, had a lot of fun doing that. And um, once, a, once I graduated from high school, went on to college at BCC. I chose BCC because um, Coming out of New Bedford, and my parents um, didn't have, we didn't have a lot of opportunity to go away to school. BCC was a, a fantastic local alternative for me. It allowed me to think about what I wanted to do with my life, starting in a, in a college close to home where I could commute, and commuting was very important. So it was really the best opportunity at the time uh, for me as I grew up coming out of New Bedford. The atmosphere at BCC was uh, very supportive. The classes were really small. The buildings were separated. There were actually two buildings. You had to drive between both buildings. Sometimes finding a parking space was not always easy. Uh, but um, the, the students I went to school with were great. And the teachers were, at the time, the professors I had. One of the greatest things was they were very, very supportive, very encouraging. I think one of the fantastic experiences I had at BCC was they developed your independence. They developed your confidence. And that school allowed me to continue my confidence and continue myself in my education, so it's a great experience. After BCC, I um, went to what is uh, UMass Dartmouth when I was there was SMU. I graduated in 1975 with a bachelor's degree, bachelor of science in nursing. And then I uh, subsequently went on to, to uh, Boston University and received a master's degree, master of science degree there, and went to Suffolk and have an executive MBA. The interest in healthcare had a lot to do with the opportunities that existed in healthcare back in the early 70s. It still exists today. It's a great um, opportunity to, to uh, 
for me, for me to use my professional skills, it was a great opportunity to, to find the right kind of positions. So there's lots of, um, at the time when I was in school, you know, a lot of job security, which was important to somebody like me coming out of New Bedford. Um, and there's a lot of variability in the work. There's, a, there's all kinds of worlds you can travel down, so a lot of different roads. Once I graduated from SMU, I started as a staff nurse and actually in Fall River at the old Truesdale Hospital and um, then went on to work at facility and programs in Boston, including Boston City Hospital. Went back to graduate school, um, finished graduate school, and um, went into the nursing administration world. Uh, did that at Morton Hospital in Taunton, and then eventually came to South Shore Hospital 22 years ago, where I've been now for 22 years. Did various positions here in the executive world, and um, I've been the president and chief executive officer of South Shore Hospital and the V&A in the hospitals of South Shore for the last seven years. The South Shore Hospital has been a fantastic place to spend my professional life. Um, the last seven years as president, we've grown considerably from about a $250 million hospital today to this year, we will deliver over $400 million worth of care. Uh, we are like third biggest emergency room in the state today, the third biggest maternity service in this part of Massachusetts today. We've added a lot of different programs, brand new cancer center, brand new surgical programs, brand new orthopedic service that will open up in about a year. Uh, it's been a very exciting experience. And one of the great things about working in healthcare, especially in Massachusetts, is that there's always tremendous need and patients want to get their care locally. And as we redesign programs, we've continued to grow. We employ now about 3,800 people. Uh, so a lot of growth for South Shore Hospital over the last seven years. Been, you know, um, we've been able to serve more people than we ever could have imagined. It's been a great experience. I'm married. I, my wife and I met in high school. Uh, we've been married almost 35 years now. I don't know if you want to add that. I have two sons uh, who are both now out of college. One graduated from St. Michael's uh, in Vermont, and the other one graduated from uh, uh, Johnson and Wales in, in Rhode Island, and um, we live in Dedham, and we've been in Dedham for a long time. Although we still come down to New Bedford because both of our parents still live in New Bedford, uh, in the North End, and so we were down in New Bedford a lot. And one of my sons actually, when he was in high school, uh, took a course at BCC during the summertime in computer sciences. That's his background nowadays out of school is, is computer and graphic arts, and um, so he had a great experience there too. I think like a lot of young people at the time, I was concerned about that was I able to go on into college and do a good job. I mean, a lot of my friends didn't go to college. Most of my friends, as a matter of fact, didn't go to college, which is not uncommon for in the time period I grew up in New Bedford. So even taking the college route was not that typical. So there was, I think, at a minimum, just a little concern about confidence. And what BCC provided was a very, an atmosphere that, it, that encouraged, you, encouraged you, believed in you, provided, the professors provided a level of confidence so that you could develop your, your own skills, uh, your writing skills, your verbal skills, uh, your thinking skills. And that confidence, I think, is what led to my ability to go on to, to uh, SMU, UMass Dartmouth, and then obviously to graduate programs. So BCC was the starting point, but more than just a starting point, it was the it was the building block that allowed me to get to where I am today. It's a very, it was a very important part of my life. Time now for some other news and notes from around BCC. We're at the end of another academic year, and that means that commencement is right around the corner. This year's edition of the Bristol Community College Commencement Exercises will take place Saturday, June 5th at 11 a.m. at the Fall River Campus. Now, for those of you who cannot attend the ceremony, you can view it live on Fall River Community Television, Channel 95 on the Fall River Cable Television System. It will also be available for viewing anywhere in the world through our live stream online at frctv.org. Bristol Community College has signed another collaborative agreement with a four-year institution. Students in the Division of Math, Science, and Engineering as well as those in the Division of Business and Information Management can transfer up to 80 credits toward a Bachelor of Science degree in Project Management from Wentworth Institute of Technology. The program is slated to begin this fall. Even though the academic year at BCC is nearly over, the learning will continue this summer. 
There are dozens of four credit classes available, as well as the annual Kids College Program for youngsters. You can find out more on all of BCC's summer offerings by visiting the college's website. Registration is already underway, as is registration for the fall 2010 semester. That's all for Around BCC for this season. We leave you today with a look at the annual Juried Student Art Show, featuring the best work of BCC's student artists. I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great summer. We'll see you in September.